it is what it is. But I don't know, maybe just bad luck, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just happens. You know, I'm, I'm learning about each row is kind of learning, first one's learning about weathering. Sure. That's it. So this is more about lighting. Um, okay. I, I just started it for 30 days, my light was like four feet up. And I was okay. like, oh, when I reset the tent, I didn't bring the light pack. I totally didn't even think about it. So mm -hmm. now I, I've got like bonsai cutters now. But Are they like stretched out like a lot? They started to stretch out, but then when I was turning them, I had them on the, um, kind of like those little um, tomato stain things. Sure. Um, so they ended up getting high down, but they did it just they didn't get much higher than that. So <laughs> they kind of looked funny there. They're very low, but um, one was just an experiment because I thought it was dead. Took it out for two weeks, and I put it back in, and she grew again. Sure. So I was just trying to figure out lighting and all that kind of stuff. And Fair enough. How do you guys feel about lighting? Are you guys comfortable with lighting in your lighting situation? Well, we're still learning. Perfect. Uh, you, you want to talk about lighting? Yeah. Talk about lighting and how that forces the plants yeah. work? That's fine. Word. Yeah. All right. So we'll talk about that. Um, so basically what it's called is um, DLI. It's been called DLI. It's a, a unit of measurement. It's called daily lighting integral. Um, and what it is is basically how much light the plant can intake per day before it's just like frivolous or like wasted. Um, to put it very, very like simply. Um, at a certain point, uh, the plant will only be able to take in like 30 to 40 on average uh, in veg, 30 to 40 DLI uh, per day. I want to say that's like through their uh, the photon density or the PPFD somewhere in there. There's like some crazy calculation where okay, so basically there's your light fixture and it starts off in your basic watts. Um, like a 1,000 watt um, and a 100 watt are often advertised as the same thing. So you got to be careful like which ones you're buying. Um, a thousand watt light will typically be like a four by four to like a five by five like size. Like it's going to be a big boy. Um, you so oftentimes see. What you pull out of the actual wall? Is that right? What do you mean pull out of the wall? Like when it says watt, it's actually 100. And then it's oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 exactly. Watt is just what's like the, the actual amount of power pulled from the wall. Um, amps and volts, they do something fancy. I don't really know. I'm not going to pretend like I do. Um, but yes, uh, what you'll so oftentimes see, like um, a lot of like Chinese companies will advertise on their drivers, like this is like a thousand watts, like the Spider Farmer One Thousand, right? That's not a thousand watt. That's a one hundred watt or one hundred and twenty watt. Um, it's really the best way to find out, like for sure, how much wattage like that light is actually pulling is to look on the driver. Um, it'll, it should be advertised like in the specs, or the driver will actually say like, itself how much power it can actually pull. Um, but if you see like a thousand watt light for like 60 bucks, it's going to be, it's too good to be true. So it's going to be a hundred watt light, most likely. And they'll do that for two thousands and three thousands. They're basically just marketing a model number to confuse you as wattage. So just be, be wary of that, if that makes sense. So from there, um, the easiest way to, to do it and the, the most, I'd say the most typical Patterns and like which you see lights and like their intensities. So like a 1,000 watt, 100 watt would be good for like a two by two area. Like a, a 200 watt would be good for your, like your two by four area. Um, yeah, exactly. Like it's like the uh, like the lighting shape, the lighting pattern that it can actually like put off um, for the tent. So what size tents do you guys have? Do you guys have like four by fours or? I have a four by four, not like a two by a half. Sure, they have a little nursery, like yeah, a little two yeah. by two. Five right. by five with five. Is it a thousand? They all get the email. Is it a thousand? No. The light, the lighting is huge. Perfect. Awesome. Is it one of the, like, like a bar light? Yes. Cool. Your tent's huge. Yeah. yeah. I like five by fives. That's yeah, I got five by five. I got, I got a five by five and big old bed in it. Um, what kind of light do you have in your four by four? Pardon? What kind of light do you have in your four by four? Uh, Mars. The Mars Hydra? Yeah. Perfect. Is it a bar like this, the bar style, or yes. like the quantum board? Yeah, it's got six bars. Six bars, perfect. So you're like, it's like a 600, 660 watt, and then you're, you guys are around like a thousand watts, probably. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. Awesome. So, like, the way, like, I remember what you were talking about earlier is like when you would reset, like, you were, um, you didn't bring your light back down. A lot of times, like, you don't have to bring your light back down. Like, I like to keep my light, like, straight pinned to the top and just keep it there the entire time, and I'll just dim it. Um, so, like, when I start from seedlings, I just keep it at like 30%, and I just bring it back up to like to about 40 to 50%. Once I finish like veg. When I go into flower, then I stagger it up more and more 
but uh, there's different ways to, to basically do that. Um, do you never get to 100? I uh, 90. I try like 95, 90, but then I get to like 100 and then I get scared and I just turn back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just, yeah, so like 90, like, I feel comfortable with 90. Yeah, I mean, so it's part of that, that DLI thing. Is that basically, there's no more light that I can actually put into this plant that's going to make it any any better. You know, at that point, it's basically just um, like stressing. Why am I struggling with this? I'm so sorry, guys. Um, it's basically just stressing. So basically what happens is uh, your light is going to be your foot on the gas for a car, right? It's going to determine how fast the plant is going to grow, how much nutrients it's going to take, how it's going to cycle, um, how it's going to drink, how it's going to breathe, all that stuff. Um, how how bright it is and or how much it's turned up is basically your PPFD, your photon density like per square foot. Um, there's ways to measure that with things like a PAR meter. Um, and you can usually use like an app on your phone just to get a number. Um, yeah, I, yeah, they're kind of uh, they're kind of fun. Um, what it does is it, like it basically gives you a number to work with. Um, it'll give you a number of how like intense that your light like, light is at a certain point. So if you were trying to figure out like like a good like a good like a good spot to basically, I know that like at thirty percent my light. And where I'm going to keep my plants are going to be about uh, 350 to 400 ppfd. At that point, I know that the lighting intensity isn't too much. It's not going to be able to force them and make them just eat and eat um, and stress out my system. And by my system, I mean like how much nutrients it's actually uptaking, um, how much water it's uptaking, like how the humidity is reacting to it, and then the light again, of course, putting off heat and you know changing the relative humidity and how that interacts. Um, but yeah, so I try and keep like a lower, like, um, like a lower DLI in veg than I do in flower. Um, just because it allows them to grow bigger and faster in my mind. Um, I keep uh, lower light, higher humidity. Um, it's less pressure on the plants to basically, um, bring water up from the root zone and is the range you're talking about? I like around like 70% humidity, 65 to 70% veg, if not a little higher. Okay. Um, I just I usually keep my life around like 30 to 50%. Um, my PPFD is around 400 at most. Um, and again, like you're going to have to get like one of those, like these little apps if you want to like to see what it is. But um, for yours, or you can always come to the store too and like check it out and we'll show you. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> I pretty, do that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Um, Why do you keep um, humidity so high in veg? Um, because it basically allows them to grow a lot easier, the, like the pressure. So there's also something called like vapor pressure deficit. Um, this one is a relationship between like temperature and humidity and the actual like barometric pressure that's being put on the plant um, and forcing it to grow. So the way, the way that like it's really like in the middle of summer, if it's like it's hot and humid out and like we're working out and it's like really sweaty and like, God, I just feel disgusting. Like I would really kill for like a breeze or some cold blast of air. Um, plants feel the same way. Um, so when they're not working out or basically when you're keeping them, when they're, man, I am sorry guys. Uh, um, so basically, the vapor pressure deficit is the relationship between temperature and humidity on the plant and the pressure that's uh, putting on the plant to grow. Um, when you are having a very high temperature and a very low humidity, uh, the plant has to bring up more and more water up to the root zone so it can process and cycle its nutrients. Um, it's got to bring that up to help process the light, um, which is basically driving this entire process of growth. Um, when the humidity is higher, it is it has to bring up less water, basically. And when it brings up less water, it has to work like a, like less hard, or it works a lot easier. Um, when you go into flowering stage, you should you would I. This is the hard part about it, right? So like the humidity is important because it makes everything much easier for the plant, but the humidity also causes problems. The humidity is also going to cause like with mass in the bud and like the. Um, 
the leaves themselves. Like you will end up getting like powdery mildew or botrytis, um, just because there's so much moisture and for it like transpiring like in on itself. Um, so in flower, that's typically why you bring it down. Um, so you don't have to worry about like that uh, bud rot or the, um, like, the powdery mildew. Um, so you bring it below 60%. Then you're also forcing it to bring up more nutrients and forcing it to eat as well. That's like a general idea of like, um, called like crop steering. Um, basically adjusting the temperature and the humidity to force the plant to eat in different ways. Um, so is it is the idea to make it easier for the plant? I know a lot of times when you read about things that they, they give them uh, so that they go into shock kind of so that they know what stage they're in. So by keeping it higher you're making the transition easier than to do the lower uh, humidity and lower temperatures. Well, I mean, so just the same way like our season cycle, like your tent can cycle that same way too. Um, when you go through like, you know, like your your peak veg and your peak growth period where it's like really high humidity, really high temperature, yeah. and you start switching into flower and bringing that down, you'd want to bring it down gradually. I mean, you could do it overnight, just like switch a button and you know, like, it will shock them. Okay. I mean, you're absolutely right. Like plants like to have like, like all things like that to be like consistent and like eased into something. Nice. They don't want to like turn around and have their environment changed overnight. Um, but again, like sometimes people do do that, you know, they do like to shock it. You know, sometimes people will do like, like two days of darkness, you know, and then they just turn off the tent for two days. And that's going to be a major shock to the plant, you know. Um, yeah, or even before they switch them to flower, too. I've seen people starting to do that now, too. And, and then I guess like the whole idea is that, like, with that is that like, the terpenes and like THC responses are basically driven from the plant like by stressors you know so like that would be a stressor so like bugs attack like the plant basically it puts out more terpenes it puts out more trichomes as like a stress response or a defense mechanism um it communicates through different um terpenes are basically like the plant's pheromones and that's how like they speak to each other um but yeah so like the idea like uh Anyway, so back to lighting, sorry, my bad. Uh, back to lighting, like, uh, in beds, like, the idea would be to have like a little like lower light, like no more than like 50%, uh, in my mind. Like if you've got like your, like, your six and one, because like, it dims, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my light's been, it's pretty hot. I mean, I'm still in beds, the, the light's been pretty hot. They're doing their own thing. Some of them are not. Um, but I'm at like 75. Okay. But, Again, my light was about four and a half feet. I, sure. I've since dropped my light to about 25, and I've turned it down back to 75. It was like up at 80. Mm -hmm. about. Um, but in my mind, I was, it was, I was getting no reaction from the plants for so long. Mm -hmm. like, oh, you know. Well, yeah, no, I mean, that's the thing that too, right? So, like, lower light and, like, you know, like, uh, that, like, you'll basically, you're, that light is the driving process for their growth. So, if you turn it up, it, like, it, like, they reacted, right? And then they, right. they wanted to grow more. Yeah, no, it absolutely. exploded. Yeah, yeah. I felt like I've been starving them for... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So, like, okay, so then your PPFD, like, there's, so there's, like, that's, like, that, that magic number in there. You know what I mean? That's, like, that DLI or the PPFD is, like, where it is, like, where is that perfect number where I have these things growing the way that I want them to, and they're happy, they're not being stressed mm -hmm. out, they're... Going on, and unfortunately, like like with different lights, there's always going to be like a different number. You know, there's different. There's going to be a different PPFD. So like my PPFD at like 36 inches is going to be different than yours, than different than yours. The DLI, the daily lighting integral, should be between 30 and 40 for cannabis, all the way around. But don't quote me on that. It's a, a science study by a place called like a, a lighting company called like Timber. They basically started bringing that out and talking to people about it, which you know it seems to. It's going to be pretty good. Um, yeah, our light goes 50, 75, and 100. Yeah. So it never goes under 50, so is that... I mean, are you like, are they germinating fine? Are they doing fine? Yeah, they yeah. did. They yeah, did yeah. well. They did yeah. fine. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're going to, please, please. Um, we did viper cookie and... Um, yeah, I'm like hard breaking gig. I want like sour diesel. Oh, it's slow. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, sour tangy. Sour tangy. Cool. I, I like those tangerine mm -hmm. turps, didn't I? I love orange. Um, yeah. So like the percentages, like again, like the percentages won't matter. Um, because like my light's gonna be different than yours. You know what I mean? Like you guys have a thousand watts, she has a six hundred watt. You know, I have like fifteen hundred watt. Like the, the percentages, like are just, they're just different. Um, 
But like again, so like we're all pretty much like on the same page. And like you guys have noticed that like where you like basically you dim it and bring it up gradually, and how the time will react differently. Um, that is basically just because like the light is the, the major driving process for um, these plants to understand like their cycles. Um, in the spring, it's basically the spring through summer going to be like a lot of growth. Um, as you go into fall, like these buds, like it gets cooler. Um, the buds kind of uh, start to develop. There's like less light. They go into their um, like senescence, I guess. They're basically like the decay period. Um, what you can do, you know? Um, I just started messing around with uh, dimming my lights down to like 50%, like the last week before I harvest them. See what happens. Um, I don't think it hurt anything, but I don't really know if it like did anything either. I think it's kind of just trying to go more towards like a natural cycle, I guess, and just like, but there's a million ways to do it, I guess. Have you ever done photos in 24? Uh, I've done photos, uh, like I vegged them, like in the nursery like period, sometimes I'll leave my lights on for 24 hours, but like after, like after like their third or fourth node, I like, usually just have them at like 18, six. Um, I just kind of feel like everything needs a break. Yeah, um, it gives my system a break. It's just like from like the lights and like the fans and all that stuff. Um, gives the plants like downtime to I don't know like recoup and not have to process light. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'm completely straining the system. I know. I was kind of because I, I missed so many months, so I was trying to fill my you know fill my reserves back up. So sure, I, sure, sure. So I put the autos. I was we were going to do in the smaller tent, but I decided to do four instead of two. So I put them in the bigger tent. And then gold nuggets, these things, I mean, my photos go forever anyway. Mm -hmm. I think it's like to my lung room area, because it's, it's in the basement, so it's, you know. Um, so I know my photos are going to go on forever, so it's just kind of seeing, this is my first time with the 24-0. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah, so yeah. If I have, so yeah, again, like in every circumstance is different. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, like, there's always like, so like in your circumstances, like you're you're running autos, but you want to veg out your photos too, right? Is what like I'm assuming. Um, so, yeah. 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 So then you basically just have like your, you have the light at twenty four or zero for the sake of the autos, exactly. and then once you're done with those, you'll Both change it back to the photos. Yeah, I mean, or basically turn it back to twelve twelve or yeah, whatever yeah. you're gonna do. But, yeah, yeah. No. One hundred percent. Yeah. Exactly. You know that makes perfect sense. You know. Um, yeah. I mean, I would do it if I was in the same situation. Yeah. Um, you know. What about you guys? Do you guys have any questions? Sorry. This is. This is our first crow, and I'll tell you. <laughs> This, I think when we do the second one, I'll still be like, really, you know, I'll probably attend every class again just because I, you know, you miss something. The first go around, I think you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. no, no. So you don't know what questions to ask, or you yeah. don't know what the next stage is going to be after that you read up on it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, it's just, you know, I think the second round, I'll know a little bit more about what questions to ask. When did you start? Um, John. Yeah, yeah, we kind of turn it into like a, like a free oh, question forum. We'll have a second. Thanks. When it was, we would just pick and pick and pick and pick. And he cleaned up the bottom too much. I so didn't do enough. They ended up being very thin buds because he picked all the leaves off while it was um, flowering. Right. And they no longer, so I have very skinny, <laughs> very skinny buds because they didn't have all that, oops, they didn't have all the other leaves. Well, so I was told not to yeah, pick all my yeah my colored leaves off because they were supposed to be they're still helping them. The yellow ones are still helping. Oh, okay, okay. That's just what I was the told. No, I'm okay. I'm in a form when everybody knows yeah. that I'm like the newest person there. So and I'm not afraid to be like oh I'm done. Well, um, we got big buds. Buy for yeah. cookies. I mean good they were yeah they good size up on tops. Yes. And they came down. I mean they just kind of clicked together. Least, yeah, like know. staircase. I love yeah, what happens. yeah, they yeah. did. I mean, to separate them, I'm gonna have to, you know, really put them out to to find the buds separately. They they did well. Yeah. I think it sounds good. I mean, like, honestly, like, a lot of times, you know, there's plenty of nutrients in the soil. There's plenty of nutrients in what we're feeding it. Yeah. There's plenty of nutrients left in the leaves. Um, but go ahead. Yeah, but that's the part that I, I guess at the end of flowering was to. Um, Okay, the last time I got, they got nutrients. So are you Once doing... Once I decide, like, well, they say, I don't know. So, so, so what, are you, what are you feeding just in general? Like, like, what, like what's your food? Oh, okay, we, I start off with the molasses, and then I have, I'm still, I gave them uh, cow milk, uh -huh. and I gave them, uh, uh, um, uh, what is that called? 
the flowering one. And at the end, I added that beastie. Oh, okay. So, um, Fox Farms? Yes. Got you. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then? And what else am I going to do? Uh, the photosynthesis thing that we do with the blood? Yeah, that I have to measure. Photosynthesis no, Yeah. Or, yeah, so like all that's that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you have all your food, you have all your, you have all your um, like your little microbes, all that cool stuff. You yeah, have a little bloom yeah. booster in there. Um, do, oh, you, and I gave the the oh, what's that one? It's also for microbes. It's another crystal. Uh, crystal. Some sort of like phosphorus booster, probably. Or? Um, it's got like a box or something. You sell it at the store. Yeah, ah, okay, like by blood. It's, it's got to be the, one of the Fox Farms things. Yeah, it is, but I can't, I can't do that. Probably like the tiger. So, I mean, I really fed these. Yeah. During veg, veg during flowering. Mm -hmm. And then when I think they're getting ready to... <coughs> See, now I still don't understand, I guess, that they say there's the clear, the, there's the milky. Um, amber. And the amber. All right, so when you're going and to... amber, you've gone too far? No, there's gonna be like different effects. So basically, when you're going through like to harvesting, you're talking about like, the last like like four to like you know um, four to like uh, like zero weeks. Um, basically, like your ripening stage. Um, at that point, you're gonna want to start feeding it some sugars, um, basically like your molasses. Um, uh, that way, basically, it helps cycle some of the nutrients that it has available. It helps um, basically brings those nutrients like from your leaves back into the buds and makes those like processes driven a like a lot easier. Uh, the phosphorus boosts that you're doing are basically just helping feed the bud sites. Um, but the whole idea of like cutting out, you know, mm -hmm. in the last two weeks and like right. just stopping, um, I don't know, I've got mixed emotions about that. Okay. I, I gotta say, you know, because I, mean? I feel like you're basically, it, it depends on like, what system you're in. Like if you have like, a, like soil and you've got plenty of like food probably in the soil already, um, like it would be fine, you know, like I would stop like with the bottle of nutrients and I would just go to water. Um, okay. But if I was in like hydroponics, like would I stop? feeding entirely and just give it plain water for the last two weeks? Like, probably not. Um, you flush? Not really. Uh, not in the way, um, not in the way, like, I don't know, flushing is kind of interesting too. Um, just the idea that, like, I'd be able to, like, to wash something out of, like, the medium um, or, like, the plant is, like, and it would, like, affect the plant. Like, it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, so... I think you just do water. water yeah, yeah, well, so, I mean, I was, so, but like, like, what's the purpose of flushing then? Okay, like, so, like, what purpose like would you be flushing for? Because if we're talking about like flushing the last two weeks, like for harvest, like I think that would uh, to people say that they do that all the time to remove like excess salt and buildups and things like that yeah. from the plant. So like it burns better, right? I mean, that's what I've heard. Those, those are the random rumors that I've heard. But right. um, it's not like it's, it's, it'll kick it into flower. I mean, I, I don't know. So um, you don't, don't stop. Do you don't burn. stop the nutrients at all at any time. Well, before harvesting. Well, that's, that's not what I'm saying. So, like, is, like, if you're doing like your your bottled nutrients, yeah, like I would probably I stop them. Yeah, but if they're in soil, right? So, but if it's in soil, it's got like it's already got it's got its nutrients in there. You've been feeding it like this entire mm -hmm. time. It's already mm -hmm. built up in there. Like it's right. it's it's gonna, you'll be fine. Okay. You know, like, you're feeding it just water because it'll still have food for it to pull from. If you're in hydro, if you're in a, like a bucket, like a water mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. uh, like you, I wouldn't stop feeding it nutrients. Mm -hmm. Like I would not just fill just like plain water in there for two weeks because I feel like it would just die. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm sorry. It would just pull all the nutrients from its leaves and die, and like it wouldn't have like the effect that you want it to do. Like this plant is still going through systems yeah. and starving it. You know, at, at the end of its like life cycle and its processes, probably isn't the best way to go. So would you water for two? Okay, so if you stop the nutrients, you should water for just water, like every two three days, but with nothing in it, no, no more uh, molasses, no, no anything. Just so I'm just you, pH water. I mean, you pH your water anytime, all the time. No. You don't? No. Have no. You don't. <laughs> I mean, you can't. Listen, that's, 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 so, okay, so that's another part, too. I shouldn't have to pH. Okay. No, 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 you're totally good. Uh, um, I have to so, pH So, um, yeah, you can pH. You know, again, like, I'm in Richmond City, so like I know Richmond is like 6.9, like 7.1. Yeah, right. like, like my system from like. Yeah, it'd be fine. You know, um, again, like, I rely on like organic nutrients, uh, organic um, microbes to help cycle my nutrients versus like synthetic nutrients. Um, most of the time, my nutrients are like already in the soil, and I don't really use bottles. Um, so maybe like mixing the bottles with the water makes that different for the pH for sure. Um, so like the, the the thing is like there's just so many different ways 
to do this, there is no cookie cutter like way to do it. And I know that's like what you want. I know you want me to tell you that, yeah, hey, you for the next eight weeks, this is what you're going to do every yeah, week yeah, on yeah, Thursday. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> but yeah, but you know what I mean? Um, you're going to find your system. You're going to find your way. Like as you go through, you're going to find what ways work for you. Um, you're going to find like, like the lollipoping, right? Like yeah. some people lollipop, some people don't. You know, some people low stress train, some people will crop, some people will scrog, some people will use bamboo sticks. Mm -hmm. um, there's no right or wrong way. You can get all right. the same results. It's just whatever way is going to be more successful for you. Mm -hmm. Like, I like doing different things in different situations. Um, I'll use a scrog, I'll use bamboo sticks, I'll use, you know, yo yo's, I'll use whatever, whatever it is I need to. Um, but for the most part, keeping your food simple, like, sorry. I first wasn't sure what we were going to do, but let me uh, break this out just a little okay. bit. Give you guys some examples. Um, so, like food. Let's talk about food. So, your food is going to be like your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium. It's going to be all of your micronutrients. It's going to be uh, some of your macro elements as well. Um, your food is going to be everything that the plant needs to produce itself. Uh, I was talking about that I used to. Oh, perfect. Good. <laughs> um, so, these three are examples of food. This is going to be... Um, Grodox, it's basically from the real growers, it's a synthetic nutrient. Um, it's going to be a bunch of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all your trace macro elements, um, all that cool stuff in there. It gives you rates of how to apply it. I would typically go for a heavy rate, so a tablespoon per gallon, mix it into soil. All you're going to have to do from there on out is add water, and you're guaranteed to have food in your, your soil. Your plant, you won't have to worry about it. And keep your food simple. I highly recommend that because you can play with other things. Here is another example of a food. Uh, it's the 310 Zero. You can mix this in um, to tablespoons um, for your soil. Um, and I would use it in inert soil at that point too. So something like Happy Frog, something like Pro Mix or Cultivation Nation, something that doesn't have a whole lot of food in there, so you're not competing with it. Uh, nectar for the gods, yeah. Um, another example of food. Um, is this a dry amendment um, is basically made for um, like um, fish meal, kelp meal, lobster meal, um, all that cool stuff. Um, all the stuff that we've seen. So if you can take a look at every one, it's yeah. going to have, you can start on this side, at the bottom there's going to be these numbers um, that are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Here's going to be uh, 3, 2, 1.5, and then 15% calcium. Um, that is basically the percentage of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium per volume of that bag. Um, this one is going to have like a description of your macro elements and your micro elements on the, on the top right over here. So the way that these nutrients are all made available to the plants are going to be very different um, depending on which ones they are. Um, the one in your hand in this brown bag and this black bag are organic. The one in this uh, blue bag is synthetic. Um, what you'll typically need for an organic um, Organic nutrients to be broken down is some sort of microbe, some sort of um, biology. Um, basically, the plant, yeah, exactly. The, the plant will um, secrete exudates through its root zone to, um, and talk to the different pieces of bacteria. That bacteria will go along like your mycorrhizal, your uh, mycelium, and your root network to go find those things. That bacteria, humic acids, and different acids will help break all that down, and the plant like uptakes that. Uh, when you're looking at a synthetic nutrient, um, typically there's not um, the biology in there to help buffer that. So basically you need to have your pH on point because it's basically like a direct like tap line into like the, the root zone. Um, so there's, again, like two different approaches there. So you can do something that's organic or you can do something that's synthetic. Um, you are, if you're using something like this, like the Great White, right? Yeah. Um, this is basically... Um, a bunch of different mycorrhiza, a bunch of different bacteria, and a bunch of uh, another one called uh, trichoderma. So mycorrhiza is basically, God forgive me, I hope you're not filming this and quoting me on this, but mycorrhiza and fungus are basically uh, parts of fungus that will expand along different root zones until they'll help break down dead and decaying matter. Uh, mycorrhiza and fungus are basically, the universe is just like composters. That's all they're going to do. Um, this one has like, I can count that, like 15 different colonies of endo and ecto mycorrhiza. Um, endo is basically on the interior and inside of like the root zones and ecto basically expands the out, the exterior. So it'll go through and basically expands the root zone to help find water, reduce heavy metals and all that cool stuff. 
Um, bacteria is what's going to communicate with the plants and help break down um, some of these elements. And then the trichoderma um, is like a fancy bacteria that basically like uh, eats bad um, like pith and bacteria. So yeah, sorry. Uh, there you go. So endo, ecto, um, and then bacteria, and then the trichoderma. Pass all that through. Um, that is uh, basically another. Um, is this organics or? Organic, one hundred percent. Yep. Um, so that's all of your like living biology in there. So that would be your um, bacteria, your mycorrhiza, and uh, a fancy other bacteria. Something called recharge. Um, something called recharge is synthetic. However, it still has four different types of mycorrhiza through these gluomuses, um, two different types of bacteria. It also has kelp, molasses, molasses, humic acids, fulvic acids, and amino acids. Um, it is basically like an instant compost tea, a tablespoon to a five gallon bucket, once every two weeks. Solid. I've only used that to, um, I've never used that in this, like, I have the um, garden cups, and I put those, once the seedlings come up, I put those right in the soil, and I use this around the garden cups to break it down. Um, but I've never actually used this like in the soil for more than just trying to break down the cups. I didn't know that was like... Oh yeah, every two weeks? Yeah, so sometimes like, so sometimes um, I get exceptionally lazy and I'll just uh, basically just take it and just like sprinkle all over the beds and just water it. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and, I, and I'm totally okay with that. Uh, it's just, it's expensive, but I mean, it'll be fine. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to hurt. Um, you did this two weeks through the whole... Yeah, start to finish. Yeah. Shut up, really? Yeah, yeah, because basically there's no food in there. That's basically just helping drive your product. That's basically an, like an, an ecology boost to help break so down the foods already available. So if you use this, you don't need the grape light? Or should you use it? Correct. So, so, so think about this. Just choose. So, 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 so the, okay, okay, okay. So that is more complete because it has your fulvic acids, your amino acids, your molasses, and your kelp. Oh. And it's also got basic um, mycorrhizae and has basic bacteria. This has fancy mycorrhiza and fancy bacteria. So welcome to the hobby part of this, where it's just like, oh, I want a collection of things. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. so the, if, if I had to pick, the other. yeah, well, I mean, yeah. yeah. And say you're, I say that, but then you're gonna be missing your trichoderma. Okay. You don't need it, but like, again, like, okay. It, okay. if I had to pick one thing, I would pick that one. It's like your supplements. You can yeah. add on as much as you want. Exactly, yeah, you can add as much as you want. You can basically, it, like, it's a hobby. Yeah, because everything I use, I use from getting to end, and even the roots, uh, root stimulizer that I used, I did it all the way to the bench. Cool. I mean, was that what you were supposed to? Yeah. Well, right. I guess. Well, was there a food chart? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so like, a lot of the time, too, like, like, she, like, like, like hasn't quit yet, so. <laughs> there you go. No, but like um, a lot of times, like like these products uh, that you have will have um, different directions, and they add yeah. different like food charts and different recommendations of when to use them, uh -huh. um, or like the ingredients of like what they are too. It's also like helpful. But sometimes you also get bottles that say like root stimulator. Like we have one bottle that's like I can't tell you what it is. Though. Yeah, I can't tell you what it is. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, it's great for your roots. And I'm like, dog. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I started it with you know from you know from with the small plant and mm -hmm. then I. I did it all the way to try to stop the flower. I don't know if I did it or not. So when a certain product contains like molasses, I won't have to do my. Right now, I do a tablespoon to every gallon, and mm -hmm. kind of warm up a little bit of water and fix it, and then I throw it into the gallon water, and then I shake it up with all my other nutrients. Yeah, I mean. before I feed it. So would I not? Would it eliminate me having to do the yes. molasses yes. myself? Yes. Yes. So so that's the molasses. They keep it simple by the three products that are going to do what I'm giving yes. those needy plants. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, that's a great product. It really is. So, it's very oh, inclusive. Okay, okay. Like that and food, and your that food and water, you're good. <laughs> Fair enough. No, I was like, <laughs> that's funny. I like it. Um, to make sure I remember. Cool. All right, so basically this biology helps make your food available. If you focus on keeping your food simple, you'll always know that it's there, and then all you have to worry about is making it available. So with things like different biologies, humic acids, fulvic acids, um, typically if there's ever issues with that, you can always tell that it's going to be either a nutrient issue or a bug issue in your leaves, right? Like if you ever start seeing like some kind of like leaf-like deterioration or like spotting or um, it's either nutrient or bugs. But if you have it your 
nutrients taken care of, yeah. and you know that they're available, then you know it helps you problem solve a lot easier. Um, but if you're starting to add like different bottles and you're trying to like make like, these different things, yeah, then you don't yeah. really know where to start troubleshooting. Okay. Um, so, pests, they're fun too. Um, Virginia is a lot of pests, uh, a lot more pests than I've actually encountered anywhere, which is really weird. Um, but hey, what are you going to do? So there's going to be typically two or three different types of um, IPMs that you'll see um, on the marketplace. Um, they're either going to be, what you should be asking is they're going to be um, called, are they knockdowns, are they preventatives, or are they systemics? A knockdown will kill anything on contact. Um, it is typically going to be some sort of like alcohol based. Uh, this one is Organic Shield. Um, big fan of it. It's made from sugar. You can spray it with the lights on, which is really helpful because otherwise you have to wait until your lights are off and then you can't see anything. And then, you know, you get a whole different routine, right? Um, so this is better than like, using old That meat. stuff is amazing. Yeah, I'm a fan. I love it. Oh my God. So I ended up with um, some mealy bugs because I took in. Um, some clones from somebody and they just trashed my my girls and I have a room I don't use a tent but mealy bugs are these ugly little flat like white bugs that turn to powder it looks like when you touch them and they were just everywhere and I did two applications of that stuff and they were near damn near eradicated um, and you're supposed to do it every other day until you get rid of the infestation um, but it was amazing because I'm a neem person and I've used mala I think it's called malathon but malathon will kill your plant almost as much as it'll save it from the bus, but that stuff is amazing. Yeah. And yeah. Homegrown VA is the ones who taught me that. Yeah, yeah. so basically um, it's made from sugar, you mix it in with the um, like a spray bottle. Uh, it's 80 milliliters per gallon for like the infestation rate, and it's got a little measuring thing on top. Um, super safe, um, you can literally spray yourself with it. Um, I highly recommend doing that, especially if you're working between like multiple tents, you don't want to take a shower. So again, that's another reason why like, having being able to spray with the lights on is like helpful because I don't have to like change yeah. my routine because I usually don't go into my tents unless I've taken a shower and it's like ah, it's a pain in the ass because of like pests and bugs um, but that basically dehydrates like any kind of um, hard shell insect um, through their exoskeleton and basically dissolves them um, worms um, thrips aphids all that cool stuff uh, it's a great knockdown it's a great thing to use um, if you're ever having kind of like a problem or even just to use maybe like every other week or once a week just preventatively um, something like try that water yeah. it drinks it you watch yeah. it when they're dry they drink it immediately and if it takes they start to slow down a little when they get enough water to get up to the top so that the water never sits there for more than probably three how months. long how, There's how different big ways. would your plant be you have to be big plant in order for it to be free from the bottom right uh, i'd say at least like a week a week I old said, yeah yeah two weeks old yeah well you'd be surprised how fast these roots grow and then yeah. once they develop and they'll start drinking yeah um so there's going to be a million different ways to set up a, bottling water, a bottom watering system that would be mm -hmm. sterile, so that you wouldn't have like exposed standing mm -hmm. water. You yeah. know, um, so don't like, and you don't even have to do it at all. You and know what I mean? Like if you don't mind doing it, like don't worry about it. Plug right yeah. into the pot, yeah. and then that goes to a little tube here. So he puts all the water and nutrients in this tube and covers it, and then these tubes direct the water right to the bottom. Yeah. I mean, it's he's yeah. such a dog. Well, but, well, I know yeah. that bottom. I I've always heard that. You know, the, the, the plants up here. The, the water done. They, the roots will go to the water. They'll yep. get to the water somehow. They will yeah. they'll right. get to the water. And it strengthens them because they have to now go to the water instead of your watering mm -hmm. right on the roots. So now they're, they're getting stronger. Mm -hmm. But I found that water, even when they were little babies, um, once I put them in their, their, their main pots, they're, they're in three gallon. Um, but once I put them in the three pots, they can pull all the water they need to. And I, I tried it. I was like, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna, what are you guys on top of? What are you guys on the bottom? And see what happens. And I'm, I watch it in real time. Um, but then top dressing, of course, there's still, I have um, this the 4x4x4 four by four by four veg stuff that's still on the top mm -hmm. because I didn't, I never worked or so it didn't all get down there where it needed to be. So it's kind of a, I'm still kind of figuring out. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, you'll have different like sets of roots that will basically like feed and water. Um, like in a system like yours, like you'll have like your feeder roots are typically on top and like your upper rises there, and then you have your water roots which are basically going down below and like pulling that. Um, a lot of times, like with like top dressing and like using like a mulch layer, um, really helps like give like encourage like those feeder roots to like to come out and start eating through that, um, just because like that moisture will stay there. Um, and then you protect your top too, which is really nice. Um, again, like from pests and stuff like that. So um, I like to do like either alfalfa hay or maybe like clover or even like lava rock. Um, a few different things. Well, always fun. Okay.
So I, I have um, a double, couple double grapes in there, and then I have two LSDs. Mm. Oh God, it's beautiful. Mm. That's gorgeous. So yeah, my, awesome. um, I have an LSD. It's like an octopus. <laughs> yeah, it does. Well, at least for this. And my double grape, I expected turn colors, but my LSD started turning like, look like black. So I'm freaking out. I'm on my phone. I'm posting pictures. And I'm like, cut two buds off, and I was like, no, wait, just, just relax, let's just hear what they have to say. So I put the buds up on my little picture thing, I'm taking pictures, like, what's wrong with my, what's wrong with my plant, you know, because I hadn't seen it in a few days, I thought it started to rot. And then my brother, who's, you know, plus I was a born, he texted me, he goes, that's so cute. Hmm. Um, he's never had a plant change color before. Oh. It's supposed to do that, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm panicking, thinking that my plant is rotting away and dying, it's like, no, that's, actually normal because I've never seen the turn before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of them will, some of them won't. I've seen a lot of those where they turn like a purple to a black um, as they go through it. Uh, like the anthocyanins, they basically they stop producing or stop uh, processing photosynthesis and they turn like a nice like a purple. Yeah. I always like the oranges, the reds, they're fun. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but two types that we did are, are both of them change a lot, a lot of color. Really? Yeah. I'm and so they're, excited to see the top buds are, are, are on both, both the uh, sour and the fiber uh, cookie bowl. Yeah, the top ones are really good. And they have a nice, <laughs> nice growth. It's all kinds of buds growing all over yeah. the yeah. plant. That's yeah. cool. That is cool. Yeah, yeah. I hope that happens. And then yeah. when I have said, I did some of the lighter trichomes and then some of the cloudy. I like a kind of a higher, happier, like awake daytime kind of sativa. So I cut my sour evil some of it kind of early and then I waited a few more weeks and waited for those so it comes cloudier and closer. So it was like yeah. having two different kinds on those. Yeah, they just same plant just waiting yeah, for it. It was too. really neat. It's kind of fun to like to different stages. Yeah. yeah. It's a really fun to experiment with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's something I would recommend doing for yourself. Yeah, I mean so like to really yeah. like try and figure out what it is that you like. Um, especially when it comes to like your trichomes and your couch lock and your cloudiness because like honestly I really like a heavy indica yeah and I know like a lot of people that really like the light kind of like euphoric high and you know, some people like balanced but yeah. <laughs> you know um, it's just you know, something that you're gonna you know have to feel out for yourself and figure out what you like yeah but you do know that the ambers like when you go farther into amber you will have more of like a uh, couch lock um, when you get much more into like a cloudy you're gonna have much more of a euphoric um, kind of like cerebral high and the cloudier ones are not the cloudy ones the clear ones i don't know i don't really f they, they say there's not really a whole lot there but i feel like it's just a lot of anxiety <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of <laughs> yeah it's like oh my god what's going on with this is this it yeah. nope. so they say i don't know i think i read somewhere that it's when, you're, when it gets to the, the crystals Still and then like or the clearer the milky, yeah. and then when it's like 25% amber, that's a good time that's to... Uh, I've heard 10, yeah. Um, or 10%? So, yeah, amber. just do 25%. 25% is a good rule. That's an okay mm -hmm. rule of thumb to know when to yep. start drawing. Okay. Yeah, that's when you go ahead and cut it. That way you know it's like about a quarter of the way there. It's not going to get too much more, but okay. it should be good. It's a safe zone, though. Safe zone. Okay. Yeah, and then you can just tailor it from there. Do you have any other questions, I guess? Do you have any questions? Um, not so much. And I, I've got two friends that are being pretty successful with their tents, so I was kind of uh, coming to figure out how to get started with something similar to that. Right um, but, uh, but, yeah, because I didn't even know where to start. I haven't tried yet. Fair enough. Um, like with a tent, basically, um, yeah, I, I would just try and... Uh, you can go on Amazon now. Oh, Amazon, I don't talk about Amazon. Amazon, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, she mentioned it. Where's your store? I think Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. We're actually a nice place to live, Richmond. Yeah, it's right off the corner of. Yeah, yeah. Homegrown VA. I'm Joe, by the way, from Homegrown VA. Homegrown VA is in Richmond, Virginia. It's off the corner of 6495. 
yeah, it's pretty, you don't have to go too far into the city. We've got plenty of parking, tents, all that cool stuff, uh, lights. Um, but basically what you'll need is to decide on how many plants that you like you really want to grow. Um, I would recommend on giving each plant four square feet, so like a two by two area, just so their canopy can grow out. Um, that being said, if you want to do two, like a two by four uh, tent would be like something like this size. I mean, don't quote me to it. Uh, but like a four by four would basically be something that like twice this size. Um, okay. With that, like I would again, like I would buy the tent and the light, basically depending on how many plants that you really just want to grow. How how much like uh, is going to make your whole house smell? Uh, it depends on the strain, the uh, cultivar. I mean, like, you can get carbon filters or other different air filters that'll help. You can exhaust straight outside if you want to, and not, might not have to deal with it much at all outside of that room. Um, you could just let it roll, and I got out this one strain that smells like just cherry wine. So my tire, like, upstairs smells like just cherry wine. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, it just depends. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't, like, guarantee your whole house is going to smell like you're growing. I mean, you're, it's going to be noticeable. You know what I mean? Like, unless you do like some sort of like mitigation. It's going to smell like, I mean, either way, it's going to smell like a greenhouse, like it's like soil, or it's going to smell like plants. You know, you're going to smell like that kind of like greenery. Um, but like the it's actual... Living room versus like bedroom. Like, yeah. The, it's in a room versus like out in the middle. Yeah, so if you had a spirit bedroom, you could probably keep it pretty well on there. Mm -hmm. My brother's is upstairs. Yeah. He's that in the bedroom. Okay. It's not too bad, but I guess the more the closer to the public areas you are, the more it's going to... Yeah, I guess that was my other question, is if you do vintage it directly outside, like, is your neighbors definitely going to know that you're growing? I mean, I don't know, I, my neighbors didn't really notice. Uh, I don't, I don't care that much, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah I know, but it's just going to be like one of those things where it's... Yeah. One plant for well, the day. No, 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 but that's still... You don't want to start shipping your neighbors for no reason. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, tell Or if you just want your business, your business. It's yeah, exactly. You don't want to advertise it. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious. Unless you've got like, a bunch of people at the house and you're all hot boxing out that one. It's, you're not going to be able to smell that one. Well, no, I mean, like, there's a really different ways. So, like, you can, like, um, so, like, you can, like, exhaust it out of, like, a window, right? Or put it on like, into the alleyway. Um, and that should be able to, like, kind of, like, get it out of your house and kind of, like, nobody's really going to know where it's coming from. Um, it, but it depends, like, on your circumstances, like, entirely. You know what I mean? Like, I, my neighbor can be, like, 50 feet away and your neighbor can be 5 feet away. That's totally different thing. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. uh, you can get, like, carbon filters and they will help. But again, like, um, it just depends. You know what I mean? Depending on the strains, depends on the calls of war. It has some strains that might literally smell like a Christmas tree. So, like, right now, it would be perfect. Yeah, um, I have some strains that literally smell like cherry wine. Like, I went to, like, literally, like, rotting cherries and wine. It's like, oh, God. Uh, but you can't really tell if it smells like pot, though, either. It just, it, it, it's all... Just with that one. It's all different, but like you're gonna have to you're gonna have to mask the smell somehow or direct it. You, you can't just ignore it. But that way, you're gonna be concerned about it. Um, what kind of shop do you have? A grocery shop. Um, so basically, it's tents, lights, food, fertilizers. Yeah. Really easy to get to too, because you go up from here, you go on 64, all the way to 95. You turn off and you're not off on Arthur Ash Boulevard, and it's it's actually thick. Right next 75 to miles, 64 It's really nice. the only one worth going to in this area. Yeah, yeah so honestly. I mean, I live up here too, and I still drive to see them. So. But, um, yeah, 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 yeah. We got uh, a bunch of good stuff. But then, like, from there, like, you just choose your light uh, from, like, for your size, basically, and then your exhaust. Um, the exhaust is basically, I can't call it an exhaust, but basically, it's your air circulation. Um, you will need to, like, like, the four big things that you're going to need to grow the plant are light, sun, wind, and food. Um, and water, yeah. light, sun. <laughs> no, light and sun, the same thing. There we go. Uh, uh, yeah. I like, <laughs> Sorry, I feel like we're packing. We're going to have to hurry now. Uh, but um, yeah, like light, water, uh, wind, and food, and we have all those things. Um, and then from there, basically, you just want to get like a light that covers and fits the tent, and then you're basically getting the tent to maximize like the plants or however many plants that you want um and then just uh like basically some sort of exhaust like, like four inch six inch eight inch depending on the size of the tent um you really just want to like just have a fair exchange of air so you're basically removing like oxygen and getting fresh co2 and just basically just stirring everything up a little bit now and would a basement be warm enough? um it depends on your like particular basement like how big it is like you put a heater on it you know what i mean you will end up like having to get like a heater or some sort of air conditioner some sort of humidifier Fires are sort of dehumidifier. You're going to try and mimic these seasons all year, you know what I mean? And you're always going to have to have some kind of equipment to actually do that. Um, 
That being said, um, it's a lot easier in smaller spaces, so that's why tents are very popular, because it's a significantly smaller space, so instead of needing like a $200 like dehumidifier, uh, to do like a 10 by 20 room, you can just get like one from Bed Bath & Beyond, and like it works for like 40 bucks. Who does it? The two by fours. Um, I would say, like two by four, you could probably get started for about like 600 bucks. Um, four by four, around, 900 to 1,000, 5 by 5, and they just go up from there. Um, just the tents, the lights, and the exhaust. Um, it's the equipment, basically. Yeah, of course, every time you go from the tent side, you have to go from all of your other Exactly, exactly. And that's why sometimes like, people will like, buy, like, Oh, they'll basically they'll start. We always want to do two plants first, and then you know, like, four weeks later, they're like, okay, well, I'm going to pour out all my stuff. I appreciate you, but like, yeah, I mean, try to tell you, it's addictive. It escalates quickly. Yes. Um, but yeah, um, again, anyways, like my name's Jeff, um, and you guys are more than welcome to come down to Homegrown VA anytime you guys want to, um, and talk to me. Yeah, I know you guys come all the time. Perfect. Um, feel like we're up. Try to wrap this up. I guess you guys can continue on with your services. No um, but if you guys have any, uh, you guys have any other questions? How long does it take total? Like, from when you start to when you could expect to like? Um, you have plenty of different strains um, that will do different things. So you have um, like auto flowers and photo periods would be the two basic like uh, categories where we could start with that. Um, auto flowers are typically fast finishers, so they'll go through their. Um, germination, maturity, um, and into their flowering cycle within about 30 days, and then they'll finish their flowering typically in about six to eight weeks after that. So autos can give you usually about 12 weeks on the short end, and then I've got some photos that, I mean, like 25, 30 weeks, they'll go through like 12 weeks of veg, and then you can put them in the flower for another 14, like some sours, sour diesels, like they just run, man. But it, it, so again, like so, it's more time, more time for things to go wrong, more kind of uh, mm -hmm. more experience. You know what I mean? And it's just like, That's a good and then you get to wait for curing. And then you get to wait yeah, for curing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sours. Yeah, yeah. Thirty days. This dude told me thirty days. It's sixty degrees. Like you're not gonna get anything unless you got cured. Thirty uh, thirty days. It's sixty degrees. Okay. Well, then you get to do all that. I mess it up. I've been surprised at how many people don't cure, and you can taste the difference. Oh, 100%. Yeah, and like my whole like solution to that, like, you know, like the whole like, not being able to cure, or I want to play with my plants too often, just grow more. Just grow more. Like, you know, I don't have any time to trim it, so it's curing already. Yes, exactly. still have some, but it's not trimmed. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Can I trim your hair? Curing. It's too funny. I thought you were sure. Cure over right now. That's your home. Y'all go We did. Well, yeah. <laughs> we ended up at four. We had five. We had one was a male. We didn't so. that one out. I was and that was just shocked to the light. I love to jump up here on the uh, counters. Yeah, I have to I just basically no. tell myself to stop doing more than four plants per time. It, it just it, it gets too big. Like stop it. Just stop it. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> so is LEDs kind of like I know a thousand watts. I use high. I still use high pressure sodium. Yeah. I'm still old. So um, you under optimal conditions with a thousand watt, you can expect almost a pound out of that light, regardless of whether you got one plant or ten plants. That's really all you're ever going to get. You're not getting more than that. Is LEDs kind of the same? Out of the whole drop. So I'm just curious. Like um, I don't know. I don't know. I know that. So those ones are 125 milligrams. I guess it's just. Um, damn. I don't know how to answer that, that honestly. I really don't. Um, and these so, I mean, that's just something like as an old school THC grower that we already knew, like all of us back in the day. Because you get excited and you're like, I'm going to grow more. But really, you only have that five foot, five, five foot room. You're only going to get so much herb out of it. So you can either choose to grow some big ones that are going to have lowers or stuff, or you can grow some really skinny, tall girls that are going to have nothing but one big cola. That's your option. Of course, in a state where it's legal to have four, you'll grow big, bushy ones. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs>
Yeah. But, you know, I mean, you I was just wondering if, if it was at all the same. Well, you know. I don't know, you know what I mean? So, it's like a thousand yeah. watt being like a standard. But I know, like, when we talk about, like, so, like, like, like living soil, we talk about is like, like one pound per head. You know what I mean? Like, in your five by five, like, what you should get. You know what I mean? Two pounds, like, it's exceptional. Like, good job. You know okay. I mean? um, but I, how that right. relates to the light. Right. A pound and a half on one pound. Like, like it's just hard, like, yeah. specific to LEDs. I know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, yeah. Five by five area, yeah. Like, yeah. you should be able to pull, like, the whole, like, pound for light. Right. But, they took a long time. I mean, and and I, I be honest, like in all the years I've grown, I have yet to get average a hundred. I mean, a whole pound out of every one. But I'm still pushing between three quarters and a whole pound every time. I was just wondering if LEDs kind of offered something similar. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. I, I don't know. Do you have any reason to believe that it would be a lower or greater yield than an HPS? I mean, so what's your? I mean, I would say LEDs. Like I can. I, I, I don't know, because all I'm thinking about, like, as you're talking about this light, I'm thinking about below. I'm thinking about yeah, these fucking beds. Yeah, yeah. I don't, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah. I'm thinking about these beds that I can pull, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, but is the, the, the light drives that. Right, right, So it's right. like, I don't, you yeah, know it's what hard I mean? to separate I, any of it. I, I really mean, don't know how to like, answer that, yeah, like, yeah. quantifiably, because, again, like, the light's driving the yielding process, but the bed's facilitating that. Sure. You know what I mean? But I'm not in a bucket either, and I'm not sitting around with 10 gallons. So like, right. I can understand like, where like five gallons, 10 gallons is, and the standards, the HPS, like, yeah, there's only so much you're gonna pull out of that 10 mm -hmm. gallon pump. You know what I mean? But like. The HPS and the LEDs. Heat? Yeah. Heat? Yeah, just heat. Like, is that what, the only difference? In my mind, yeah. <laughs> and I've seen that. I've seen that. Like the LEDs will basically the LEDs Beautiful. cause like purple reactions or purple striations yeah. or some sort of like stress um, along like the the petioles and all that cool stuff and like up the stalks. Um, makes sense. You know what I mean? Like it kind of makes sense. Like because the HPS is going to have its own spectrum. You know what right, I mean? Right. And, like the LEDs are going to have like a broader spectrum, so however the plant responds to it. Right. It um, definitely seems to pull out more color. Yeah, at least like from this. Yeah. I mean, if I had like if I had like a warehouse or I had like if I had like my shop, I would love to have HPS in there. Like it's just all day long. They you don't have to pay for heat. Yeah, right. You, yeah, you're done. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, like like right now that'd be fantastic. Um, the summer probably not so much. Right, right. right. You know what I mean? But they're great in the winter. I mean, I grew outdoor for years, like yeah. in a shed that had very little power because I have high pressure sodium. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, you, you just have them in opposite. You know, your your flower, not your flower, <laughs> but your veg is going to have lights on twenty four seven. So that's four hundred watts usually, and then a thousand watts is going to be when you're flowering, and you're always going to have them on. So you're always going to have plenty of heat. Um, like you said, in the summer, um, my life was hell. Yeah. yeah. You just bring it inside, yeah. use an air conditioner. Yeah. Oh, right now we're going through a stage where it, he's got to have the house cold. And I mean, he puts on the air conditioner and freezes in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand. I understand that. You can open the window, but then yeah. you have the window open. When we started, my basement was unfinished, and we were refinishing the basement because we had the like, flood and all this stuff. So they were redoing the basement, literally around my my room. I called it Thunder Thunderdome for the longest time because it was just dust and just horrible stuff everywhere. And then like built the floor underneath it and moved the tent on it, and it built around it. So my temperature slowly went up, you know, in the entire bottom floor. But it was very cool down there. Had all the heater and stuff around, trying to. Boost the, the long run up to a decent, decent um, temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Driving that warmth sometimes can be a real, real fun yeah. for us. Especially like the basement where it's cold and like wet. Yeah. Came in. Might be. Yeah, because the big basement space heaters would be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can always partition it off. You know, um, I had a buddy do that yeah. once and yeah. basically partitioned off like a 10 by 20 area in his basement. And it's hung up some plastic and then conditioned that area. But, all right, guys. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for coming. Um, again, like my name is Jeff. You guys are welcome down to Homegrown and ask me more questions. I'm really good at that. Does you have a card to give us? I wish I had a card. I don't have cards. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, can, I can remember. There you go. Stickers? Yeah. Nothing? Nah, I didn't. I, you know, my bad. I just yeah. figured oh, you know, I'm a sticker. Why are you doing Oh, you know, they have their ad in the back of a comic book. Those yeah, are some comic books. I guess they should. The secret Santa, the secret yeah. Santa, big thing. Yeah, my bad. Okay, it's an easy, easy place to find. Oh, yeah, no, I'm sure. I